To order the January 11th, 2016 City Council meeting in the City of South Lyon, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Obviously, I'm not uh, Mayor Galis. I'm uh, Mayor Pro Tem Harvey Waddell, and I'm filling in for him today. All of our uh, department heads are present, and all council members are present except uh, Mayor Galis. Is there a motion? Motion to excuse Mayor Galis' absence. I'll second. Motion by Kivel, uh, seconded by Kramer. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Approval of the minutes of December 14th, 2015. Are there any additions or subtractions or additions or corrections? Mr. Mayor, yes. Yes, on uh, page six, uh, paragraph number four, uh, it's down towards the end. She further stated the developer may not have the authority to donate the utilities that should be dedicated to the utilities. On page seven, under paragraph six, uh, midway down towards the end, it said Attorney Wilhelm stated it could be best if the uh, bonds are collected to secure the work to be completed <coughs> and any review fees be invoiced separately. I believe it was uh, Councilwoman Kurtzweil who made that comment that the fees could be invoiced separately. On page eight, under paragraph five, in the downtown area in the middle, there is the word your, Y-O-U-R. It's a contraction, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. That's a grammatical correction. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll move the uh, minutes as amended. I'll second. Motion by Kramer. Uh, seconded by um, Joe Rizzi. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Approval of the bills. Questions or comments? Hey, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Go. I have a few. Uh, first one is on actually page one, the first one, Cool Yule Flyers. I, I know what this is for, obviously, but my question is uh, regarding where we, for $49.06, where we use to print. Do you know if this was a local print shop that we used or is it somewhere else? I believe it was a local print shop um, and the invoice was submitted to the city as we were the ones collecting the donations. Okay, because my what I'm getting at here is it would be nice just to make sure that we're using, I saw Lakeland printing and um, Quicksilver printing as I know we use them quite frequently. I just wanted to make sure across the board, even if we're having other people making copies that we stress that we want to use local companies. Uh, okay, now my next question is for SVC calls to repair security cameras for charge of $1,230. Um, what happened to the cameras that they needed repair? I believe that was a situation where they were doing roof work on the building and the cameras got knocked out of alignment as well as went offline and we had to call in a service tech to fix them and realign the cameras so that they monitored the correct locations. So that was done by the outside contractor that knocked them off or is that our I, own people? That I don't know. Bob, Could, do you know? We re-roofed the bathroom in the park. Mm -hmm. Some damage occurred <clears throat> to the camera while my guys were. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't an outside one. That and we didn't know it was at the time, Joe. Okay. And Lloyd and I followed up on that and worked together and there was also a small amount, I believe, uh, software work that was done on those cameras at the time, an upgrade. Excellent. And um, just as a follow-up question, um, I know we bought these several years ago, but is there any sort of warranty, or is that already void or expired for maintenance? You're right. They the, are quite old. Yep. But the warranty is actually expired, and um, not to step on Mr. Martin, but uh, the city is looking at updating to an entirely wireless system. Um, using a local South Lion vendor that has provided security cameras to both Lion Township and Green Oak Township. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question is on page 
three of three, I'm sorry, one of five, uh, it's actually page, it says one of five at the corner, it's actually page four, uh, regarding the service call for channel 19 DVD player, and it was for $285. I'm just curious when I hear $285 in a DVD player for a service call, do we end up buying a new one? Do we get it repaired? We sent it out for repairs. That was the charge. They had to send the DVD player to California for the repairs, and so that was the charge. Um, it was brought back. It still didn't work, so they are attempting to fix it again at no charge. So how much would a DVD player like that cost? What I'm getting at is if we pay $285 at this point, could we have maybe bought one for 100 bucks? I don't know how high tech this is. For, for, for this type of DVD player, no, um, okay. because this has the automatic looping system that goes into the cable channel so that once what is playing uh -huh. finishes, it automatically replays because we don't have the current cable system with a play schedule. Okay. Um, so no, we currently have a regular DVD player hooked up, but it doesn't have the equivalent looping system. Okay, just for my curiosity, um, could you do me a favor and just find out how much that would normally cost sure. for a new one? Thank you. That was it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes. Maggie? Thank you. Um, my sort of pet peeve is on bonds, uh, performance bonds. So I had a question on uh, what was the uh, Sing Homes uh, building bond refund of $500? What was that all about? That would have been a lot refund for f completing a house on a lot and meeting all of the requirements. And what was the amount of the bond that was posted? 500 Okay, so they got back everything they posted? Yes. No fees were taken out? No fees were taken out. Is this a South Line handshake, or is there an actual contract with the terms and conditions of the bond? There's an actual contract, and that is a $500 fee that's set up in the city's service fees schedule. Okay. And I see on here that there's a uh, car allowance for you of 350 Yes. I wasn't here when your contract was approved. Could you explain that, please? Uh, that is a standard uh, allotment that is given to city managers for the use of their vehicle for business within the city or the county or any travel that I do for the city, whether it be out of the county, across the state, to Lansing, to meetings, wherever. That is way I don't I turn in a mileage reimbursement. Pardon? I never turn in a mileage reimbursement. So I just it's a get straight the, 350 a it's month. It's a straight 350 a month. Okay. Gateway Commons, uh, this looks like a Michigan tax tribunal case, summer refund. Discussion on that. What happened here? Michigan tax tribunal. Right. I don't have any details as to why they changed it, but that's the change that Oakland County agreed to. Okay. And that was handled through the city attorney's office. Stephanie Marita handles all of the tax appeal. So I did see in the invoicing that there was she handled that and there was a an agreed upon consent judgment as to the uh, resolution of the case do you know what the basis was for them wanting a tax reduction i don't off the top of my head no uh next question is new directions behavioral i'm just curious what is that 484 that is our um, employee assistance program uh, the council voted that in in <clears throat> 2015, I believe it is three dollars and eighty cents per month per year or per month per employee that's covered that also covers the employees in the volunteer fire department. It provides them with counseling services, financial services, um, a whole host of different things. It's a fringe benefit. Yes, it is. Uh, Lexus Nexus. LexisNexus is one of the systems that we use through the uh, property tax system, and we have to be signed up to it so that we can have access to it. Okay, so you're using it for tax purposes. Yeah, Lisa would be. Okay, <laughs> and then what is the MWEA Asset Management Seminar? That's a class that the DEQ is now, I wrote about that recently, uh, the DEQ is now requesting asset management, not only plans, but yearly reviews and the MWEA is putting on a class for this and myself and two of my employees are going to attend which is later this month. Okay, so this is more to upgrade qualifications and credentials? Uh, it's required state training. Okay, so it's to upgrade. DEQ. Absolutely. Okay. Um, next I see a professional service for Shredit USA. 261 boxes of shredding here at City Hall. What was shredded? Uh, we collected documents from all over the city departments, water, wastewater, uh, everything but the police department. We shredded old ballots from as far back as, what was it, 2002? 
um, different uh, documents that basically had we had gone past the time of required state retention. Does the city have a retention policy? Yes, we do. Okay. Can I have a copy of that, please? I can. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? Motion? Make the motion that we pay the bills. I second. Motion by Kramer, uh, seconded by Didakis. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Approval of the agenda. Lynn. There is one item I'd like to add to old business. You all should have in front of you an invoice from R.J. Hoffman for the demolition of 390 Lafayette. Um, I'll get into more discussion on it when we get to that point, but would like to have the approval of that. Uh, the reason for that is there were some change orders, so it's slightly over the contract amount. Anything else? No. Oh, and um, at... Uh, for Mayor Pro Tem Waddell's recommendation, since we are discussing the special counsel um, economic development and grant writers, it was his discussion, his recommendation that we remove items four and five from under the new business, the general discussion on blight ordinance and the general discussion on the downtown since they are basically being covered during the regular meeting. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. So you want to remove... What? Um, Roman numeral four and Roman numeral five. Oh, we're going to be talking about those anyway. Since they're up for the, there's both under general discussion of <clears throat> the regular agenda items. And that was at the re recommendation of Mayor Pro Tem Waddell. We have a pretty extensive agenda tonight. Uh, in addition to that, we have a closed session uh, scheduled and so I would propose to move the manager's report and council comments to just before the closed session so where's the over maybe I'm, I'm looking at this here and discussion on blight ordinance the overlap is which one uh, is number seven discussion we in hiring and number no. six under new business so that's the same thing special council yeah Okay, and then downtown, where um, would that be the overlap? That Probably. would be an overlap of six, seven, and eight. Hmm. I, I don't, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was, that's okay. Go ahead, please. Well, my notes that I have prepared with respect to the downtown uh, don't have anything to do with hiring of a grant writer or job responsibilities, EDC, um, or special counsel. I mean, they're, they're, it's a very separate category of just dealing with downtown issues irrespective of what people vote tonight on the bright attorneys or the grant writer. All right, then. Um, so we'll just leave them in. I still intend to move the manager's report and council comments. So the changes, the agenda then is to add an item under old business and to move the manager's report and council comments. Um, I also, uh, for the uh, AP students here, this is going to be a long meeting. Uh, somewhere around 9 o'clock, I intend to call a 10-minute recess so that you can get your uh, uh, agenda signed and get off the streets before 10 o'clock if you have driving <laughs> restrictions. Uh, and I know school starts about 7 o'clock in the morning, so um, we'll plan on that. You guys were falling asleep last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see all you need to see tonight. <laughs> I was only five minutes into the meeting. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then I need a, uh, a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I do have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so. The only changes. No, no, uh, my okay. question is regarding Roman numeral 11, the closed session. So can you... Can we have a general synopsis of what we're going to, be, what, why we're having a closed session, or what that's about? Uh, not without violating attorney-client privilege. Well, is this something that is attorney-client privileged? Yes, it is, and you received a letter from the city attorney on it last week. Is it regarding the letter itself, or something else? The reason why I ask is because last year we had, I don't know, I lost track, probably seven, eight closed sessions. Many of them weren't, weren't even needed, in my opinion. And I just want to make sure that we're not taking advantage of um, having these closed sessions when they're not really needed. So I would like to know, in my opinion, if it is what I'm thinking about, that the letter was, 
my understanding was that was something that was a public matter as it was? Um, I, no. no. The no. Item no. We're, only that allowed I think to have, we're only allowed to have a closed session for a specific. No, I know. I'm very familiar and, with the Open Meetings well, Act. Well, then we'll I, let the, our attorney advise us on that. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, so I wrote council. Actually, the letter was addressed to the city manager. It pertains to an issue where I need direction from council regarding legal action. And I don't think that it's appropriate to reveal anything at this point. There will, if there's action taken, it will be in an open session after the closed session. And that may be an appropriate point at which to identify the, the subject matter without disclosing attorney-client privilege information at this point. But there hasn't been an actual lawsuit filed, which... It's to decide whether we're going to do it. Right, but the Open Meetings Act is very clear where it says that regarding pending litigation. Well, which it's not actually, not, 8H no. says regarding... Attorney-client uh, privilege. Attorney-client privilege for memos and written documents yeah. from the city attorney. Well, not just because you see a receiver memo that says attorney-client privilege. You can put that on anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, okay. And then have an Open Meetings Act. I mean... I mean, and that doesn't make it attorney-client privileged. Yeah, and, and I would like to um, also question, because I was confused about this. The subject matter of your letter pertains to a public meeting. Am I, am I wrong? No. 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 It's, was it, it a public meeting or not? It's, it's regarding the... No, just did, did the people who appear appear before a public body? It's whether... That, that's all I need to know. It's regarding the legal effect of action taken at, by, the, by an entity, the Board of Review. Right. So, and, and is that a public? Can I walk into a Board of Review meeting and sit there and listen to petitioners or applicants go before the Board of Review? I thought I could. Yes, yeah, you can. You, you can. Then it's public. The, the subject actions, matter being discussed is. is not. The meeting. Okay. And did these two people appear at a public meeting? Yes. So whatever information... Actually, I, just to clarify, I don't know that either of them... Well, one of them did not appear. I'm not sure one of them appeared. I know the other was present. It did appear. So it was public? Yeah, th it's a public meeting. It's an open meeting. So what's confidential about what happened at a public meeting? It's my legal advice written in an attorney-client communication where I'm seeking input from council regarding, regarding a meeting the, regarding the that was impact public. regarding the, a public meeting of the action at that meeting. I don't know. This sounds really fishy to yeah, me. Yeah, because no, it doesn't. It, you guys are missing the point. No, You're no, missing no, the point. No, you are missing the point. Point That's of order. Fine. Point of order. Okay. The issue is, is that you can't make a decision in a closed session. Correct. So whatever decision is made, it has to go on the public record anyway. Correct. So I'm trying to narrow down what is so confidential about what happened at a public meeting. With all due respect, I was just going to say, I honestly think that if you have a attorney-client relationship, that substance that you're speaking about is privileged. So they can't come out until afterwards into a public meeting. So if you're the client and you're the attorney, that is public or not public information. It's privileged information. Yes. It I think, I think the problem is, is that you've captioned a letter that contains nothing but, quite frankly, public information in it. You have a recommendation in that letter that pertains to policy issues, which you cannot talk about in a closed session. So I'm looking at your letter, and I'm saying this is not a closed session matter. No, I, I have a very uncomfortable feeling with going forward and excluding the public from communications and an opportunity to watch how their government makes decisions. And I am not clearly convinced that the matter you've raised in your letter is, is worthy of a closed session. That is the point I'm trying to make. I am for open government. I was elected, not you. I live in the city, not you. And I feel that I am accountable to those individuals that are saying this occurred at a public hearing. But What's so confidential about Mr. that? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. All right, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. And Mayor. Then, and then I, am the, I am the city attorney. I am looking out for the legal interests of the city. I have written a letter that is attorney-client privilege to the council 
that advises regarding an action taken by the Board of Review. There are legal impacts. I have provided legal advice regarding the potential impacts and asked, I've provided you with a recommendation and am seeking input so that I can take action or not take action based on that information. That is attorney-client privilege communication. The action that you take will be taken in an open meeting, but it will be after a closed session where you receive legal advice regarding what's going on, what are the legal implications. That's all that we're trying to do. This is not a transparency issue. I'm trying to provide legal advice to my client so that an informed decision can be made. That deliberation and decision will be made in accordance with Michigan law in an open meeting. Anything in closed session, I believe, and it's my opinion, is allowed to be discussed in a closed session so that I can advise my client and my client can talk with me in a, in a setting that's appropriate and allowed under law. I agree. Hi. I'm sorry. I agree. I, I reviewed the letter. I agree. Mayor? Uh, Mary? I agree 100%. Okay. In order to go into a closed session, we have to have a motion, a second, and we have a roll call vote. Any of those of you who disagree with going into this session, you may vote your conscience on that. Is there anything further? Yes, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. As I mentioned, and I, this will be the last time I say it, last year we had many closed sessions, many. Over seven, I think it was, out of maybe 10 meetings or 12. I, somebody fact check me, I'm probably wrong in the exact amount, I lost okay, track. That's the point you've already I, made. I'm sorry, I'm still speaking. So we had many, we had many meetings, and I don't feel that we should take liberties with these closed sessions all the time. So my conscience says that I'll vote no. Fine. All right, I need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'll move the agenda as amended. Kramer and uh, Kibble, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. No. no. Two no's. Roll call, please. Kibble? Yes. Vidakas? Here. Rizzi? No. Waddell? Yes. Kramer? Yes. Kurtzweil? No. Motion still passes. So much for getting along. Public comment. Is there anyone One here who would wish to make comment on no. something not on the agenda? You can see that we have a long agenda. We have a lot of folks here. Please make your comments uh, brief. Thank you very much. I will. I, I'd like to address. introduce myself. My name is Tim McClory. I am your risk manager for the uh, Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority. And it's my privilege to come here. Uh, Actually, uh, I'd say all but one year uh, since 2006, or since you joined the MMRMA, uh, to deliver some good news. Uh, the Michigan Municipal Risk Management Authority handles your property and liability coverage. Uh, we're not an insurance company. We're a nonprofit organization. Um, so because we're not an insurance company, we don't operate like an insurance company. So when there's money to be had at the end of a year, we don't send it off in a dividend check to uh, to stockholders or build new buildings or any of that, that stuff. Uh, we give the money back to our members, of which you guys have made the wise decision to join the MMRMA years ago. And I'm happy uh, to present to you, uh, I have two checks this year. Normally there's only one. Um, part of your uh, contribution to the MMRMA goes into what is known as the state pool loss fund. Well, because our members are so proactive in risk management and because our our, uh, uh, our partners in risk management uh, participate in a RAP grant program, uh, and I'll talk about uh, a RAP grant for security cameras in, this, in a second. Um, uh, because they adopt our risk management attitude, we're not having losses, we're not having losses, we have more money, and with more money you get more investment return. So that, that precipitated an extra $2.5 million uh, back to just state pool members, and your portion I have with me. So. Out of the $45.1 million uh, declared by our board of directors, uh, brings, bringing the total since 2006 is the implementation of the net asset distribution program, MMRMA has given back $195 million back to the membership. Uh, and again, last year we gave back 45, or this year we gave back $45.1 million. And your portion of that, I have a check here that I'd like to give to Lynn. Uh, oh, <laughs> drum roll, please. <laughs> That's the wrong one. That's a state pool one. <laughs> Powerball. Powerball, right? Yeah. 
$43,596. Wow. So I, Thank you. I have that check. And on top of that, the state pool check is 25000 uh, 705 bring it to about uh, just a hair under $70,000 uh, back to the city. So I congratulate you, and that's all I have to say. And uh, certainly I'd like to uh, say hi to the new board members. And uh, uh, I, I, I'm, here once, I'm here once a year. And, and again, I, I noticed you had some trouble with some security cameras. And if you're looking at replacing them, part of the monies that we give back to our members is risk avoidance money. So we'll partner with you. We'll, we'll give you grant monies to help to help upgrade uh, old systems like that. So please fill out a RAP grant and we'll get it to the committee. And there's a standard RAP grant. Uh, uh, every seven years you guys reset, but you're, you, you guys have available to you for security cameras and security lighting up to $50,000 in the seven year period. So, so take advantage of that, I encourage it. And I encourage all department heads who are here to take a look at our RAP grant list of standard RAP grants on www.mmrma.org. Uh, go in there. There's a list of RAP grants, and uh, anyway, I apologize. I'm, I'm talking too long, and I <laughs> but I got 70 grand for it. All right, so thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It. I think I say it every year. Hurry back. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Late Christmas present. Thank you. No All right. Thank you, Tim. Ted. Hi, Ted Wallace, 115 Elm Place. Boy, we're in a giving mood tonight. <laughs> In June of 2013, the Lion Area Lions Club gave $25,000 to the city of South Lyon to set aside in the event we ever had that rec center and so forth. We know Mike worked very hard, very right. diligently, lots of hours, lots of credit to you, man. Thank you. But we as a group of the Lions Club would like to see that money dispersed now among uh, some city projects. We'd like to see that the hockey rink tarp be purchased through this amount of money that, that is included in that. I've talked with our DPW, Bob Martin. We'd also like to see some equipment added to the children's area of playground equipment. Certainly uh, with the handicapped nature, usable uh, nature to it. Anything left over from there would maybe go towards some bleachers in Volunteer Park. Mm -hmm. Originally, when we put the money in, we said that uh, if, the, if the rec center didn't take place, that uh, we'd like to have it towards capital improvements. We're modifying it a little bit simply because there is a need for a hockey rink and a tarp, and Bob's working on that, I know, and we want him to be able to have some funds for that. And after that, if there's anything left over, uh, he has promised that he would let us know what they would like to do with that. And so we're kind of, it's been set aside. We still have it, right, Lynn? Yes, we still have it. Did it, did it get any interest? <laughs> I, it probably collected interest. It probably went into a special fund within the general fund. Yeah. But anyways, uh, if I'm again, I'm representing Mike. I don't think any of my other members were here. I didn't see them show up, but uh, uh, I do have the full board permission on that. And if you think you might want to do a formal acceptance of that money at the next meeting or something, that's fine too, you know, however you want to do it. But uh, we're releasing that 25000 to be used towards a few of the projects we mentioned. And if there's anything left over again, Bob will find something for it. All right? Thanks, Seth. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Welcome. Hi, uh, I'll be try to be brief as possible because we do have a long agenda. Uh, my name is Ryan Lair, 716 Grand Court. As uh, I've been up here many times, I'm also up here today uh, as a staff member and uh, counsel for the um, submarine uh, museum for Silversides. Uh, they sent me a letter and asked me to make an appearance tonight. Uh, because the fact that this resides in Muskegon, Michigan, uh, a lot of the members and staff board members that are on our board of directors couldn't, wouldn't be able to make it to this type of a meeting, so they asked me to do it. Uh, actually, right now what they asked me to do is just a, and ask for donations. Uh, I have uh, packets for after the meeting that if anybody wants to come up and meet with me, I can discuss that it's basically just donations for the submarine. Uh, uh, give a little general history about the submarine so you understand what the donations are for is she is a Gato class attack submarine uh, She was launched 12 days after Pearl Harbor and She was decommissioned in 46 and then she came to Detroit, Michigan where she was docked at Hart Plaza 
and from there she went to Chicago, Illinois, and from there she went to Muskegon. Her engines were Fairbanks Morse engines, and they were built in Chicago, Illinois. So she went originally to Chicago for that reason, but Chicago didn't want to ante up the funds, so we ended up getting her in Muskegon. She went on 14 war patrols, and she's the highest hundred submarine to survive the war. And so we have three running diesel engines on board the submarine, which are lighted throughout the holidays and through different parts of the year during special events, including a lost boat ceremony that is taking place on May 22nd of this year. These engines need to be repaired, and they need upgrade and maintenance, wiring, all different equipment that needs upgraded that's above the operating cost of the museum. So anybody that can donate, please go to the website, ussilversidesmuseum.org. You can donate there, or you can call and speak to Denise Hershaft, Michael Kalp, who's the executive director, or um, <clears throat> Teresa Folkmeyer can also take your donations over the phone. Um, it is protected and secure website, so if you do choose to donate, you are encrypted and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but I will be happy to answer any questions after the meeting since it's a long meeting um, regarding donations in the submarine itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Anyone else? Welcome, Carl. Hello. Uh, Carl Richards, 390 Lennox. Request six minutes, Mr. Pro Tem. I'll go as fast as I can. Um, First word I'd like to say about is the demo project. I want to let you know because I've said other things. I fully agree with everything that was done at the timeline and as far as it was done up till this time. I've talked and met with our building uh, inspector, Kenneth Pike, uh, on the site and at, at the hall. And uh, uh, we're both in agreement, OK? I won't go into the details of the extras that Mr. Hoffman did. Uh, I'll let someone else do that when the time comes. I just will say one thing about the second floor that he removed in the west end. There was 8 to 12 inches of sand between the upper floor and the lower floor in that third westerly part of the building structure that he took down. Extra, Quite a bit of extra work getting that out, and they did a beautiful job of it, in my opinion. The peat that's under, underneath the ground, he brought up some for you to see. Probably nobody ever noticed it. I looked at it. Uh, incidentally, it's top grade. If you ever want to drag it out, the topsoil guys will just be drooling to get their hands on that <laughs> stuff. But it, and I, in my opinion, at that location, it only goes 12 feet, as opposed to 13 feet where they built Wendy's or where Wendy's was built when it was Hardy's initially. 13 and 14 feet. It's not as deep. Consequently, you wouldn't need a mining permit to excavate. City, the city uh, DPW could probably excavate it on their own. And you can use it on all your property since the city is the largest property holder acreage-wise in the city limits. Uh, the school being number two and Colonial Acres being number three. Uh, anyway, just thought I'd let you know this. I've, and I got a couple of rocks for souvenirs off the place. And man, they're beautiful. I hope my landlord likes them when I'm gone. <laughs> OK. Item number two. Uh, tonight's agenda, as all of you have copies, is a little hard for me to read. Okay, I have some visual difficulties. So I had to make up a bigger one, okay, which you can all see. And this is, this is easy for me to read. And uh, probably some of you out there could find a, maybe not this big, but at least 80% this big would be helpful in the future if you're going to have quite a compact agenda to deal with, with a lot of items in it. Okay, item number three. Uh, I've been going around town a little bit asking people what they think about everything that's going on here at the transition period. And uh, there's a lot of comments coming out. Most of it's negativity. And I don't do negativity at a council meeting. But I will pass it on to you that uh, most of them have never seen our little complaint form. This is what's available at City Hall for a complaint. It's not my place to go around doing this. At, at, uh, but I thought I'd just let you guys know. And you might uh, want to take a few of these and go around and just ask people what they think about everything that's going on. OK. Item number four, real quick. Everything you see on this chart in yellow. All right. I'm sure you guys can't see this. 
This is the commissions that expire on the 1st of March. The people that their terms ex will be expiring on planning, zoning, Board of Appeals, and Parks and Recs. Uh, cable, not on it, of course, and Historical Commission, nobody's up for renewal. Uh, I will give this to you, Harvey, um, and you can pass it on to Mr. Galis, okay, because he makes the appointments. Uh, item number five, real quick, regarding what was discussed last, last time around the safe routes to school. Oh boy, I think we're going to run into some rocky, rocky waters with that, with the township. And I'm just alerting you to the fact that we need closer liaison relationship with the township, in my opinion, because this, this could be something that won't go smoothly. It might go smoother with that. With that, I thank you very much, uh, Council, Mr. Mr. Waddell. I'll give you this. I'll thank you, Carl. consideration. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Is you there anyone much. else for public comment tonight? All right, seeing none, I will close public comment. We'll move on to old business. Lynn. Okay, you have in front of you an invoice from R.J. Hoffman Management for the demolition at 390 Lafayette. Uh, the reason this is coming before you is that there were a couple of change orders due to conditions that were discovered uh, during the demolition of that structure. Um, the demolition contract was for $34,780. Um, there is an addition of $1,800 for the removal of the second concrete floor that was found in the rear of the building. And then in order to stabilize the footings that we were required to leave in the ground, um, there's an additional uh, $990 in concrete that was delivered by a concrete truck, $1,800 in labor, and then another $52 in ready mix because they didn't want to call in another concrete truck for just one more yard of concrete. Um, we did get a credit of $1,850 for leaving the partial footings around the building, um, which brings the total contract to $37,572.89 which is a total of change orders of $2,792.89. So I'm asking for the council's approval of the original contract plus the change orders for this contract. What was the number on that change order, please? Uh, $2,792.89. Okay, thanks. Question? Yes, Maggie. Um, I had a question on the contract itself. Yes. On the demo contract itself. Was there a basement in this property? Uh, we thought that there might be with the second, if there was, but we couldn't find one, so we did put potential for basement in there, but not for a secondary foundation. Did anybody go in the building and look? The building inspectors, the fire department all went in, um, but they weren't sure whether the basement had been blocked off because there are buildings where the basements have been blocked off. Because I've been in that building myself, and I never noticed a basement. And I can recall just about all the corners that were there. And the reason why I'm questioning the basement, as you know, <laughs> you know, the bid went out, and it was, and the specs for this contract required the winning contractor to fill in the basement and backfill with dirt. So I, it was hard for me to ascertain whether Blue Sky's bid was so overpriced because he was pricing in, filling in a basement that didn't exist. That I can't answer. Every, every contractor was given the opportunity to come out and look at the buildings themselves. Uh, Blue Sky did not choose to make that visit. Uh, R.J. Hoffman did. So I can't speak to whether um, Blue Sky chose to overbid based on whether there was a basement or not because they had the opportunity to visit the site and verify everything. I just don't know how that got confused because, like I said, I've been in that building and there's been no question there's, there was no basement. But, okay. And that was reviewed by Johnson Rosati, the contract? It was. It was also brought before the council. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Pertin. Go ahead. So, again, I'm still, I may be off. Um, so did the, the RFP call for a basement removal? If there was a basement for the removal. If there was. Yes. So what you, you just said was you weren't sure. 
We weren't there sure. There was a basement, but yet we did ask for them to, to remove, remove it if right. there was one. Yes. I'm just a little confused by that, but okay. Thank you. Harvey, I've got a question too. Go ahead, uh, Glenn. The, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit flummoxed by why it was our responsibility with this to cover the cost of them removing the second concrete floor. We asked for the demo. Um, pretty much we want the building gone down to dirt and give us a dirt site that we can do whatever we want to afterward. I mean, that we didn't say which blocks, which bricks, whatever. It was take the building out. So why are we making them whole on something that they hadn't investigated to find out? I would say that we are making them whole because there was no way to anticipate a second foundation under the existing foundation. Um, when you have a concrete slab, and the way this was is we thought there may be a basement. We wanted to make sure that if they removed everything that they did all the way down, including anything in the basement, um, they removed the original concrete foundation. But as they were starting to backfill and got to the back of the building, they moved sand and they found a secondary foundation that was not anticipated in the bid and that removal was $1,800. So there was a strata of sand between the, the first concrete floor and the second concrete floor? Yes. Okay, I see. Oh, yeah, it probably would have been, I mean, even if they had bored, they wouldn't have bored far enough to mm -hmm. recognize that then, so. Yeah, there was at least 8 to 12 inches of sand between the yeah. two levels of concrete floor at the back of the building. Okay, all right. Comment? Go uh, ahead. Uh, Councilman Kevill, you know what may have happened? That area over there is all peat. You know, and you look at Browns, you look at the area, maybe one theory, it's just a theory of me, maybe what happened, is that the cement slab began to sink at some point because of the peat. It certainly did, so, yeah. so you know what happened? They came in, filled it with sand, and then threw another foundation on it. Right. That's um, awesome. The basement thing to me. There is no, I, I've been I mean, it, I mean, there certainly could have been a basement, and you would have poured over. I mean, you could have poured right over whatever the existing previous floor had been. So I don't know what would have given anyone an indication that there was a basement there, or no basement windows or, or evidence of access. But like I said, I mean, I can understand if they had come in and done their due diligence with doing borings to determine the depth of the slabs and things, if you had a, a void of sand that was a foot deep, you wouldn't have been, you know, boring an extra foot once you hit dirt. So I could see that being um, something that would have been overlooked. So I'll just have to accept that. Go ahead, Mary. Um, well, I guess I share the same sentiments as Councilman Kivel. Um, my question was going to be originally, was there a survey done prior to entering into a contract? Because if so, I would assume that they would have found this additional piece of concrete. And if they didn't, that's on them. And I don't think we should have to pay an additional $1,800. That would be my original sentiments. Mary has a floor. But that would be my original sentiments, but since you answered that question, we're good. So we don't need to say anything else. Thanks. Well, I'll make the motion then that we uh, authorize the additional payment of $2,792.89 for the demolition of 390 Lafayette. I'll support that. Okay, motion by Kramer, supported by Kibble. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to new business, our first uh, consideration is the appointments and resignations from city commissions. Let's start with the first one, the resignation from the DDA of Mr. Bill Gar uh, Jarrett. Uh, Mr. Jarrett has chosen to resign from the DDA. He explained that his architectural firm has become extremely busy as of late, and he does not feel that he has time right now for the DDA and can use that more that time more productively towards his business so he has chosen in December to resign from the DDA motion I'll make the motion that we accept the resignation of uh, Bill Jarrett from the downtown development authority board um, I have a comment yes um, I was reading well, can, can we get a second before we go to discussion oh sorry okay. thank you my bad. Okay, we have a uh, second. second Kramer and uh, Curse Will. Now, discussion. Mary. Okay, I just have a quick question. I just want to make a note that when I was reading the email from 
you, um, Ms. Ladner, yes. to Mr. Jarrett. In the email, there says, or it says in here, but there was very little to discuss for the agenda tomorrow. I do have a concern that our DDA has very little to discuss. Being as our DDA should be working closely with council to build up our downtown area, and this is a whole slew of issues that go with it. I find it very daunting that we don't have much to discuss on the DDA. So, and I'm we, sure they're doing a great job, and that's not to say anything to the DDA about their performance, but I, mean, I think we have a problem if there's nothing to discuss on the agenda. The issue as there were was um, the only thing when we sent out a request to the DDA board members to see if there was anything they wanted to put on the agenda, we did not receive a reply back from any of the members. Um, that would have left the only things on the agenda for discussion in the December meeting is um, topics that we had discussed in the month prior, which is the ongoing uh, attempts to get an over-the-street banner program going, um, the potential of purchasing a trailer for the farmer's market, which we are still in the process of, so it would have only been an update on those two items. The previous meeting, they had chosen to take several items off the table agenda so that they were items they no longer felt needed to discuss, except on a ongoing basis, such as whether or not there were Eagle Scout projects that could be used in the DDA, um, different things like that. So with the DEA board not having anything new that they brought to us to discuss. Um, the meeting was canceled. We do have a meeting this Thursday. We have several items on the new business agenda for that, as well as the old business items. Okay, that's good to hear. Mr. Mayor Portem. Go ahead. So Mar Mary's uh, question reminded me, I don't have the exact email, but um, I did read it and it did say that uh, there, was, there is a lot of stuff What's it say here? Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to skip it. But basically, uh, the synopsis was that there are a lot of pressing issues for our city. But I just want to clarify: are, are you the secretary of the DDA? Right now, I am. Yes. So, I'm, wouldn't you control the agenda? I control the agenda, but the board members place items on the agenda if they if there are issues that they want to discuss. So, but you would work with them and ultimately set. The agenda yes but since they didn't give you anything okay because the reason why I ask this is because I've spoken to members of the DDA and they feel that some of the communication from the city is lacking and helping the DDA and they need support All right. the, Joe the discussion to, or the uh, motion before us is on the resignation and whether to accept it I think this is pertinent to somebody resigning from the DDA I mean that's it's not reflected in his letter all right. He's well, saying all right. He's is there too busy any to do it. any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of accepting uh, Mr. Jarrett's resignation, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion passes with our thanks. Now we have two applications for uh, appointment to the DDA: Mr. Abraham Ayub and Jennifer Dunnigan. I see Mr. Uh, Ayub is here. Is Miss Dunnigan here? Yes, they're both. They here. both are here. Would you like to uh, address the council? Either one? Say hello. <laughs> I understand we have one appointment to make. Is that correct? Uh, two appointments, actually. We have two appointments. I, and with Mr. Jarrett's vacancy, we will still have two vacancies. But I have um, talked to the DDA board, and I have uh, talked to several other people. And we have business owners in the downtown development district that we are planning to talk to, hopefully to get them to fill out an application <coughs> and apply to fill those vacancies okay. before the next meeting. My apologies for calling you up and then interrupting before you start. Please <laughs> name an address and yep. introduce yourself yep. to I'm us. Jennifer, Jennifer Dunnigan. I live at 216 East Lake Street. You guys know it as the Christmas house. I'm getting rid of all my Christmas stuff right now, if we still have lights on. Um, I have the um, privilege of having my business out of my house, so I actually live and work in the downtown area. Um, basically, I'm not in the DDA. I am a few feet off of the DDA based on the zoning. Um, but I do have that unique perspective, and I am very interested in the economic development of the downtown from both a residential and a business perspective. Okay, thank you. Great. Hey, welcome. Hey, Abraham Ayub. I'll give you my business address, which is 417 South Lafayette, which is in the district. 
most of you know me. Um, been very involved in the community, looking forward to being on the DDA. Um, my real estate background will probably come in handy, and my business background in the city. I look forward to being on it and hopefully do some good things. Good. Thank you. Uh, yes, Maggie. Um, I would like to comment. I, uh, Ma'am, I've never met you before, so I can't comment on you personally, but you know, I still have my Christmas lights up, so obviously we have an affinity to a certain particular season of the year. Um, I would like to uh, comment on uh, Abe Ayub's uh, appointment to the DDA, which I'll be talking about uh, throughout the evening, is I think it's really important that we work with individuals who have credentials. And I think this is a, um, ma'am, you, you have some great credentials, but I also think that um, the city needs, in your appointments, you need to be strategic um, in terms of who you are putting on that DDA for at least probably the next three to five years. And I think you've made two strategic decisions tonight. A business owner who actually lives in the area, who has a viable business that actually has customers walking in the door. And you also have a real estate individual who has probably one of the best reputations in the area, in the region, for selling real estate and knowing what he knows. So it's not about putting people on the board. It's about putting people on that DDA that understand economic growth, economic development, and somebody on that board has to have a background in real estate. So I think these are two good appointments tonight. I hope the other two are just as good. Thank you. Mr. Mayor Tim. Thank you. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, and I, I want to echo those sentiments. I, I think this is such an important issue, our downtown. That's why we have it as a standing agenda item. So I uh, want to welcome the new members to to be um, and thank them for, for their service stepping up. Uh, personally, I, I have been inside the Christmas house. I think it's wonderful. Uh, I would encourage anybody, everybody to, to check it out. It's great. Thank you. Thank you all. Is there any objection to a motion combining both appointments? If not, I would entertain that motion. I'd make that motion. I'll support. Motion by uh, Kivel, supported by Rizzi, to appoint uh, Abraham, Ayub, Jennifer, Dunnigan to the Downtown Development Authority Board. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Welcome. Aboard. Welcome. And thank you. Uh, second item is to consider a request from the Cable Commission to purchase new recording and playback equipment for the cable access channel and desktop commute computer to remain in the administration technology room for the purpose of operating new equipment, storing files in the content library. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. Welcome Great. aboard. Thank you. Uh, good to be here tonight. Steve Kaukinen, uh, 1120 <coughs> Polo Drive. Uh, you know, last time we were here in front of you, we talked about three different areas. One was about the software playback system, one was about the content library, and one was about uh, just getting the community involved in our efforts. Tonight we're going to be focused primarily on the software playback system and the hardware requirements for that. Again, looking to bring ourselves into, uh, you know, up to date on what we're able to do with our video <coughs> playback system or our cable channel, uh, ch uh, cable channel 19 here. Um, in South Lyon. I think besides just the fact that we'll be able to bring it up beyond the fact that we have to replace the DVD every time we want to change a show, we will be able to create playlists that we can go out there and schedule, and let the com community know what's coming up, uh, what's going to be playing on the channel. Um, I do think it will also uh, start to spur more interest in, in the channel. I think the other key thing that was brought up last time here um, was the ability to actually not just have this on uh, the WOW uh, cable network, but also be able to do some streaming over the internet. So anyone with the internet access will be able to also check out ch uh, cable channel 19. So with that, we did provide you with some, uh, some uh, information within the information packet here tonight. I don't necessarily want to drain through it, uh, but we do have some cost information in there, the different vendors that we, that we uh, went, uh, had, had uh, considered as far as the software package. And here tonight we do have it set up here on the system for all to be able to see as far as some of the basic capabilities that we have. So I'm open up to, uh, and, and I have the Cable Commission here with me as well here tonight to help me answer any questions. I'll just add a couple of extra comments. My name is Rich Perry, 875 Westbrook Drive. Uh, thank you for taking time to, um, to hear the discussion about the playback system. Thank you for making us agenda item number two. Um, <laughs> the, the, the system is a little awkward to see, but I did want to speak briefly about the actual playback system. This is really the, the guts of what we're uh, looking to bring into the city. And as Steve mentioned, this is a playback system. And as we looked across the, um, the, the, this industry for playback systems, 
you know, every television channel out there has some type of a playback system from uh, CNN down to, well, us. I mean, we're really at the lowest level here. And so when we look for a playback system, we're looking for one, uh, building a playlist so that we can have a top of the hour, middle hour, schedule things, schedule things for today, tomorrow, next week, next month, and this, this system does all of that, and a lot more. If we were to have commercial insertions coming in from different um, parts of the country, we could pull those in with different tones. You know, there's, there's a lot of technology here, but we really only need about um, maybe 30% of what this does. But as we look through the different vendors out there, this one hit our price point. Um, and we looked at a higher end system, and we looked at a system with a little lower end. Um, this one's right in the middle, as you've seen, as you've seen of your packet. And uh, as you've also noticed, you'll see, you'll notice that the interface is pretty basic, and it actually may look a little outdated, but that's actually on purpose. We know that the people who are going to be using this playback system can range to sophisticated users to what actually most of them will be will be novice users have never seen anything like this before, but. Uh, it's real basic to use and there's a lot of drag and drop to be able to build your playlist and so it's very simple. So that's, that's, why we, uh, that's why we went with the company we did in terms of the price point, functionality and ease of use. Uh, any questions so far? Did you want to add to this? I just had uh, a couple of questions from last week when we did a little presentation and that was uh, that all new clients, if we do decide to go with this, will be uh, given complimentary training sessions within reason to get them up to speed on the software. Uh, how many people attend these sessions isn't relevant and it typically takes an hour to two hours. Um, and then there was, uh, I can confirm on the record SD playback and the SD recording uh, that was quoted with this machine is fast enough to handle both tasks at once. And those were a couple of questions we had last week. I uh, did want to add another item. We did talk about uh, the system and how it could last over the next few years. Well, right now, we're working in a standard definition world. And the equipment that you have in the room over there is all standard definition. It's not high definition, but do you need high definition? That's probably another conversation for another time. Uh, but the way we've um, structured this package, it is a SD, standard definition package. But to boost it up so that we're, we're a little more future-proof to an HD is only like another $500 to boost up the computer a little more and improve the board that goes in it. Um, so that's really not that much if you wanted to go that route. If you think in the future you do want to broadcast you know, this and other things in HD format. The other thing we talked about is how we want to um, uh, distribute the content. One, obviously, is Channel 19 through the city, which has been in operation for years. But we also know that most of the people in the city aren't watch, aren't, do not have access to Channel 19. So streaming it on the web, obviously, it makes a lot of sense. And so with the package that, we, that we're looking at and that you have in front of you, it will give you the ability to stream to the web as well. And so you know, later, Lynn, we'll be speaking with you more about that. But we want to be able to make this accessible to a lot more people. And so what, whatever plays on Channel 19 would also play on www.whateveritis.com uh, simultaneously. So uh, we're open for any questions that you have. Comments, questions? Actually, I do Glenn. have a comment. I, I, I'm tickled to death that this has finally gotten to the point where we're looking to purchase equipment. This is going to be a monumental change in the technology that the way that our channel functions, and uh, to speak to the HD, SD thing, once we've created a library, that's just an incremental step to be able to augment to a higher quality, and where I would see that come into its best use would be from programming that's submitted to us, not watching our meetings. I mean, that's not going to change whether or not somebody's interested in the meeting or not, but certainly people that have interviews with people in town or do, you know, follow a show that's going on in town, whatever it might end up being, you know, a higher quality of, of video would end up being very beneficial in that. But once the library is created, are those, uh, the question I'd like to ask is, is that SD stuff, can it be downloaded as an HD, just not played back as HD? Correct. Yes, okay. Yep. So our library would end up having the ability to be enhanced once that, that next incremental step up would, 
would take place. So my recommendation is because there are hardware requirements in order to play back HD, then my recommendation is to let's start having HD capability now. And so when you when you, if in the future you want to move to HD, you have that ability. If you decide that you don't see that happening in the future at all, then stick with well, HD. I think that it's unrealistic to not expect it yeah. to be there. Yeah. Uh, the only reason I was a little bit reticent because I have no idea where anybody else stands in this. If price point is going to end up being a concern, that $500 makes it more complicated for them. I would just assume we move forward with that more baser pack. Mm -hmm. But um, if if no one else has any heartburn from the 500 bucks, I think that's the prudent move to do. So thank you very much. Hey, that's well, all I have. Yep. Uh, Joe? Yeah, actually, I was going to comment on the $500. I, you know, in my opinion, what you're doing, and I'm sorry if I'm going to get sidetracked, but I believe in giving credit when credit is due. You guys formed is a brand new commission. What was it a year ago? Correct. A little bit more, yeah. little bit more than a year with nothing, N nothing. And then you were able to develop a vision, and that's what we need for the city: is people who have vision, and be able to move forward, put together a package that I'm confident everybody's going to be sold on, and broadcast. TV to the entire community. Now, I don't have WOW. I, actually, I think my wife got sick of um, WOW Internet, so we just got new, new WOW Internet. But I don't have WOW um, TV, so if I want to watch this, that's always one of the, my roadblocks is I, I can't. And I know, what is it, 80% of the city can't watch it. Now we're in a situation where 100% of the city, and, and people will watch this stuff, so, so that's good. Um, but regarding the extra $500, where I was going with this was, as I said, it, 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 we need to make an investment in our city, in our community, to better it. And I would say, let's go for, let's go for the, you know, raise our standards. Let's get the HD right now. So I would be all for that. Anyone else? <clears throat> Maggie, please. Um, many of you I haven't met before. This is my first time meeting you. Thank you so much for volunteering. I've spent actually my whole life volunteering for somebody. So I know, what it's, I know what it's about being able to take time and compromise your family and do what you're doing. Um, uh, you have a great uh, reputation. There are tremendous expectations out there uh, for me uh, from the rest of the individuals on city council as to what you're going to be able to do with this. Uh, I would agree with the other council members that have spoken. I've spoken about technology before. If HD is rich where you think it should be, you've got a great brain for this. Let's go for it tonight. I, I, I'm tired of waiting around. Um, I, I'm going to be saying this tonight. I'm going to be saying this for a long time. The city needs to make an investment in this community. And if, if it's a 500 additional increment, then take it tonight and go and do what you need to do because you guys are the pros and not me. So get out there and do the job. And um, I'm hoping that this particular cable uh, channel that you're going to be putting together, my platform when I ran for council, was to work on development in the city, work on businesses. Hopefully this cable channel will be a tool that can be used with additional <coughs> programming that we can bring into the city, whether it's providing people with opportunities of, of buildings that are available to rent, uh, showing them what can be done with the business, doing whatever. I'm just brainstorming with ideas. Hopefully you're going to have a business platform somewhere on this cable channel. Congratulations. I think you're doing a great job. Take your money tonight. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Mike? You know, seeing all these students in the audience, um, has there been any discussions with the South Lyon Community Schools about having a joint, I don't know, maybe sharing in some of the costs, not to say that they're necessarily going to do that, but actually using uh, our local as access channel to maybe just let kids know about, you know, what snow days if we ever have one again, but little things like that. <laughs> yeah. I think Dan can probably speak to that better than I can, but okay. real quick, um, we, we've had some conversations with the schools, um, we've um, I've I've spoken with um, uh, schools just a little bit in the past, and I've worked with them in the past in the past as well. And we we you know there's there's definitely talent there to do that. Um, and we felt that once we get the channel up and running, then we have a real case to say, hey, this is what we're doing. So, Dan, you want to speak more to that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, I think you're right, Kramer. That the the content is you know endless there uh, but it's we see it as important like let's get the channel up on its right. feet first right. before we start jumping over hoops down there but i know there's there's a ton of talented <coughs> students at east and at south line that once we tell them we have an avenue for them to put their stuff on they're 
I mean, I'm sure we'll get a pretty good flow in. Okay, great. Thanks. One other comment, if I may. Go ahead, Joe. That reminded me, South Line East, I want to see equal time between South Line East <laughs> and South Line, because I know at least my subdivision, they go to South Line East, and we have a lot of students from that live in the city that go to East. Joe, so is, is assuming we get enough volunteers to do it, I guarantee it, we'll, have it, we'll do it as <laughs> easily as we can. Harvey, I have one more thing I'd like go to Go ahead, Glenn. The, uh, First off, the, the cable channel isn't simply, or, or excuse me, if it goes online, it's not simply the cable channel in South Lyon that would have access to this. I mean, the area, the mm -hmm. internet has access to it. Right. So, you know, we get a great deal more exposure, just general base exposure from being able to do that. And just as a, a kind of a reference to the history of this whole thing, we get franchise fees for having our cable channel. So we've, we've gotten revenue from whoever our provider has been since this whole thing started. We've had scant little, if any, money reinvested in this channel. Uh, buying a, a DVD player is a drop in the bucket compared to the revenues that are coming in from it. It's not like we're flush with money, but we make a lot more money than what we've invested in, in making this a quality opportunity for our our residents to see information about our city. So this is a good first step to end up moving in that direction. So what's what's the total amount then we're being asked if we throw in the H the HD Six, package. Eight, seven, nine. Yeah, so the computer goes up to three thousand, the software is the playback software is four is fifteen hundred. Oh. Um, we're in there there's a hard drive, external hard drive on a couple hundred dollars for that. There's a recorder uh, excuse me, a record or, or capture software. That's another fifteen hundred. So that's we're looking around six now, probably six to seven, closer to seven now. All right. Do we have to, for the purposes of the motion to purchase this, do we have to give an exact amount or? How about a not to exceed? You should be able to not to exceed. Seven thousand. How much? Seven thousand or seventy? Seventy five hundred. Do I hear eight? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably a reasonable Does number. Does this uh, yeah. executive summary here pretty much capsule and capitalize the what we need in the motion? Uh, it is. I'm not sure if the capture software is listed in there. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. So, proposed purchasing a master play light software, fifteen hundred for the capture, uh, for the playback software, two thousand for the capture. So that's twenty five hundred. The computer with HD would be another three. So that's fifty five. And then a couple of other items. So yeah, we're we're easily okay. within that range. Okay. So the computer goes to fifty five hundred or to three thousand. The computer goes to three thousand. Okay. All right. I guess I'll make the mo yeah. I guess I'll make the motion then to um, move that the cable commission be allowed to purchase new recording and playback equipment with the appropriate software. For an amount not to exceed seven thousand, what do you say, five hundred dollars? Okay, seven thousand five. Yeah, seven thousand five hundred dollars. I'll support that. All right, motion by Kramer, supported by Kivel. Is there any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very Good much. Job. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next we are going to uh, consider uh, applications for approval for street closures for the Pint Size Marathon on April 23rd, 26th. No, I'm sorry. No, consider fine. application for... No, you're three. missing the, the council retreat. facility. Ah, I got it crossed off already. I'm sorry. Review proposal for council retreat facilitators and set a date for a March council retreat. Okay, as we've discussed at past meetings, the possibilities of uh, having a strategic planning session retreat led by an outside facilitator. I reached out to several communities and were able to identify three organizations or facilitators that provide these types of sessions to municipal governing bodies. You have all three proposals in your packet. One is from Lou Bender, who has been doing council retreats for different municipal governments, county governments, and other organizations for several years. He is a professor emeritus at a university in Illinois, currently uh, 
Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. Um, the second is a proposal from the Michigan Municipal League um, for a facilitator and their uh, program overview of what they can do in a strategic planning session. The third is from now retired Professor Joe Oren from Eastern Michigan University for a very similar proposal. Um, looking at all of these, the low bidder for the strategic planning se sessions of the three prices that were given to us is from Lou Bender at $2,300 and I believe that does not include travel but none of the um, actually it does it includes the amount includes expenses associated with travel from his location in Luther Michigan um, and then there's the option of a follow-up second meeting if we choose for another two thousand dollars but I didn't want to push the council on whether they wanted this to be a one-day or a two-day session so um, I have had the privilege of sitting in on uh, educational sessions with Mr. Bender. He does a wonderful job. Um, he has great references from across the state as well as from the Municipal League, and I think we would do very well with him. All right, questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I have something. Go ahead, Glenn. I, I like the price point there. First off, that I'm, this is a tough thing for me to swallow that we can't actually have adult conversations and be constructive, but since as people le are leaning in that direction, I'm hoping like crazy that they can elicit a great deal more really thoughtful conversation and, and sort of push the discussion into something that's much more constructive. Um, the, uh, I really like the questions that Dr. Oren had proposed. Is that more typical of, like, did all three of them ultimately have an interest in soliciting for some kind of a preparatory information yes. before going into the, okay. Yes, um, uh, Mr. Owen just happened to provide those questionnaires with his proposals. Okay, because I, I think that that's a, a real opportunity lost if, you're, if we're trying to flesh things out at first blush when we meet the guy rather than having some understanding going in where everybody is thinking and just to try to elicit more more information from each of us or more review from each of us. So, say for that, it's it's pretty much the other guy, the other two both sounded as though they were looking at two sessions. Yes. Yes, okay. Well, I, I'm interested in hearing other people's views on Mary? Um, I do have a quick comment. I kind of share the same sentiments as Councilman Kivel. I agree. I think strategic planning is incredibly important to making this a successful city. However, I just feel as though I'm not completely sold on the idea of all of us having to sit down and be shown a vision and kind of work toward that direction. We're all intelligent adults. I kind of feel like our credentials paired together. We can work as a team. The idea is not for him to show you a vision. The idea is for him to help the council come together and create their long-term three to five year vision of where they want to see the city go and what actual performance goals go with that vision. That way it gives department heads, boards and commissions a specific direction of where the council wants all of us to go and we know what your plans are for the future. I understand that and I see, I get the idea. However, I'm not sold on a $2,300 paycheck, I guess, for this um, doctor to tell us how to do it. I think we can pull it together and do it ourselves and strategize and come together, especially given all of our credentials. This is a fine group of intelligent people that I think we can do this ourselves. I don't, I'm not entirely sold on this, especially if we have council and house council helping us or if we hire council from Brighton, whatever it is that we end up doing, we will be able to form a direction. I don't think we need to pay someone else to show us how to do it. Mike. The only reason I'm willing to give up a Saturday is that we, I've been on this council for six years now, and it seems like we run around in a lot of circles and we don't have a common goal, which a lot of the successful communities have done. And I think this would be an opportunity, granted it's $2,300, 
but if we you know did a Saturday session we'd still be paying if our city attorney was there because I don't know if that'd be in part of the scope of his retainer but the bottom line I'm looking at is if we want the city to go forward we all have to be on the same page and if it takes somebody to get us on that same page so that we know what we want to accomplish in three years what we want to accomplish in five years then I am willing to give up a very valuable day off in order to do that because I mean it's six years I've been on this council and yeah we're making small steps but it's almost like we lack a long-term vision and I just wanted to see if we can get all get on the same page to actually fulfill that long-term vision with action rather than talk that's so fair. that's I mean that is the only reason I'm willing to do this to see if it will work Joe so I just had a conversation literally two hours ago somebody asked me they said well whatever happened to that study that Michigan State did and I'm afraid I just don't want this to turn into something where we spend all this money. But with that being said, um, a lot of people have asked that question, legitimate question where just for some background, Michigan State came in, made some recommendations. I don't have the whole thing in front of me, but install some different lights or put some park benches in or how to make the downtown more pretty. Uh, but nothing happened. And I don't know if that was the previous administration or maybe, maybe it was, but nothing happened. So. What I'm saying, though, is I'm for this meeting. Uh, like Mike said, if, if, if it's going to force us to, to all sit down and get something on the table. But what I want is I want this very accessible to the public so they can see, so they don't just have you know us sitting in a room and nothing happens. I want it available to the public. I want it on the city website with our goals and our objectives. Excuse me, I can't talk to you. Objectives. And... Um, even better would have some sort of a timeline of when of what we're going to do that's me personally that way we're all held accountable we know what the goals are short of that we're just sitting in a room and kind of going in circles as Mike said so that's my thoughts Peggy thoughts yes thank you mr. mayor um, part of part of what I do as an attorney is I'm also um, a business attorney I have a, a master's in economics, and I'm an economist, and I provide business forecasting for uh, clients of mine. So strategic planning for me is, is part of the way of life. It is, it is something that is constantly being adjusted, something that is constantly being looked at, something that is constantly being revised. Strategic planning is critical. And if this city is going to move forward, I believe, then we need to start taking very serious how we plan for our future. This particular individual, Professor Bender, and I would agree with the city manager, I think he has some very strong credentials for facilitating. And one thing I learned a very long time ago, if you can't do it, then don't do it. I'm not a facilitator. I'm not trained in that profession. And I don't think anyone in the city has the credentials <coughs> to be facilitating a strategic short-term or long-term plan. I don't know how many people sitting on city council even have business backgrounds. So I think it would behoove us to begin a professional approach to strategic planning, which would include the facilitation process. This is not a process that we have to do every year. You start this year, get your plan down, if you need to go back three, four years from now, readjust it because things have changed, then do it. But anybody here tonight that thinks they have the credentials, I'll be willing to listen to you. I want to see them on paper, and I want to see what you've done. I think the, the, the component here that Dr. Bender brings to the table is that he has facilitated at other municipalities. How lucky we will be to have this input at our meeting. And the reason these other communities are doing so well is because they do have strategic planning on their table. In other words, they are taking corporate governance and they are adopting principles of corporate behavior. Government tends to be bureaucratic. Corporations get things done. So this is actually a corporate model in terms of strategic planning to bring in a facilitator. As I was looking over the bills tonight prior to coming to the meeting, 
You know, I didn't know if anybody would raise a challenge to the $2,300 or not. But I sure didn't hear anybody raising a challenge to the $2,909 that was spent at the hotel for the Christmas party. <laughs> so I'm, what I'm saying is, where are your values? You're willing to spend almost $3,000 at a Christmas party and have shrimp, but yet for a strategic marketing plan that's going to benefit the whole community and not just city employees and council members, you're only looking at $2,300. I think there's, there's value built into having this facilitator come. So I would argue strenuously that this is something that we should look at, we should do. If you don't want to do it next year, you don't have to. But you've got to start somewhere. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Right. Can I ahead, respond? Um, uh, Councilman Criswell, I completely agree with your sentiments, and I agree on a lot of points, but I also feel like if we are going to hire outside counsel from Brighton, if that is a potential possibility that we're going to bring forth, that is going to be our strategic planning right there. That's what we're hiring Brighton to do if we hire them at all. But if they're going to come in and we're going to pay them 150 an hour to counsel us, I feel like they're going to be strategically planning and giving us ideas and giving us advice. We're double dipping here. You're spending $2,300 for us to sit down and come up with a vision where that's exactly what they pitched their idea two council meetings ago. Or maybe, yeah, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But at our last council meeting, Brighton came to us, gave us a great strategic plan, a framework for us to rebuild our downtown and to revitalize our city. I'm willing to pay them to help us and put us in the right direction instead of putting us through a meeting on a Saturday. Not that I don't want to do that, but I just think that we're double dipping. It's either one or the other here. That's a lot of taxpayer dollars that are going forth to revitalize the city, which is great, but how much are we going to get from this one Saturday in which we're paying Brighton Council to come in for 18 months to help us revitalize the city? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, that, that's the problem, is that there is a confusion as to what the Brighton attorneys would be doing for the city and what a facilitator would be doing for a city. The Brighton attorneys are being argued for because they are here to only deal with one issue of dealing with the vision for the city, and that is cleaning up the downtown with blight. That's their sole role. I don't believe that their role is to provide the city of South Lyon with a complete and total vision of revitalizing the downtown. That's what the facilitator does. The facilitator is more of a global type of individual who comes in and looks at all aspects. Brighton is looking at a very tiny component of the picture, and that is dealing with blight and code enforcement in terms of the downtown. The facilitator's view is more on the total comprehensive economic vision that the city would have going forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor all right, Joe, one more time, then Glenn. Eventually, I'll get a turn. Glenn, Glenn, do you want to jump in? Yeah, actually, I've Thanks. Yeah. been waiting. Um, to speak to your, your whole thing with the Spartan, or the, excuse me, the Michigan State's, Michigan State's yes. um, suggestions and, and their whole review thing, that was a wonderful thing. But the, the complication that we've had historically is a limited bucket of money to be able to accomplish all the things that are necessary to take care of city business. <clears throat> you know, the providing water, sewer, safety, the roads, and then being able to dress the place up. So that, that still is going to end up being our biggest complication. None of those things go away. The capital improvements, the, you know, the paying for water and sewer services, you know, the finding out, determining whether or not the way that we structure the fees that cover the cost for our enterprise fund are actually in our best interest or if we should be retailoring that to the model that's actually supposed to be associated with enterprise funds where fees pay for the enterprise fund. We've got two and a half mills assigned to that that could be going into other capital improvement funds. So those are going to be very difficult positions to end up determining what our priorities are. And then the idea of strategizing will probably be something that I think maybe outside sources would be beneficial for us to, once we've determined what our targets are, maybe someone with expertise could come in and get us aligned so that we can get the biggest bang for our buck in time and in, in, uh, for the dollar. But it's not going to end up being 
we're going to handle all of these things simultaneously. There's going to be very serious decisions to be made. So I just think that, that that's important that everybody understands that and that the public understands that. That's, it keeps being portrayed as though there was ineptitude that was driving the bus, and that's why we haven't hit all the benchmarks that we have always hoped to see the vision of downtown become vital and, you know, the smartest kids and the safest city and all these, these cool things that, that everyone wants for their own city. It's not for a lack of want. It's because you have limited financial resources to be able to provide everything to everybody. Thank you. Okay, Glenn. Now, Joe, did you want go, to go, go ahead, ahead and make a yeah. comment? I'll reserve. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to see one. All right. I, the only, well, if everyone is done, I have a comment. And my comment would be that I tend to agree with uh, Glenn's position that uh, uh, any kind of a visioning session has to be much broader than just downtown. There are a lot of issues in the city that we have to deal with, uh, financial and and uh, and everything else. So uh, I'm, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to participate if that's the... Um, that's the will of the, the body, but uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, have some reservations about it. So, are we ready for a uh, are we ready for a uh, motion? If I may ask, before um, are we going to talk about locations before we, or is this strictly just for approving? The, this is just call? this is just strictly approving, and I have looked at several different locations. Um, I've had people suggest different locations in the city that we can hold this, but I did not want to make any contacts with those to see about availability, cost, things like that, until we knew for sure we were moving forward with this, if we are, and potential dates for it. Our, our agenda calls for a review of the uh, facilitators and set a date. Yeah. That's the limitation today. Well. I understand what the agenda says, but if I may ask, we still have, we can discuss this in more, greater detail, correct? It doesn't have to be limited. Because what I'm getting at is, well, look, if we're going to... Say gonna, what you want to say. Thank you. For me to, my, one of my hesitations to say, all right, I mean, I'm, I'm for it. Like I said, we need some vision. There's a lot of issues. We've been doing this, beating our heads for the same, for years, same problems. We need to do something. So... I'm okay with having a vision session, but I don't want to have this some sort of extravagant trip to wherever with a big breakfast or lunch, and then before you know it, it's just cha-ching, racking up all the, the dollars and cents. We could keep this very local. We can go, you know, I don't know where suggestions are, but there's plenty of places within South Lyon. So before I say, hey, this is a great idea, I want to know where at least we're considering, because I don't, if, if your vision is to... We are go somewhere else. We're then. considering using City Hall. We are considering using the room with the library. We are considering the second floor of the South Lion Hotel. We are looking at some of the meeting and conference rooms at the local okay. golf courses. Right. So is it safe to say then that location and cost of that location will be the subject of another uh, uh, agenda item yes. before this council? Right. Does for that me, satisfy you? No, too? no. But for me to, <laughs> well, that's okay. You can laugh. Um, for me to um, be comfortable with approving this, I want some reassurance that we're going to stay within South Lyon. And maybe it's just as simple as asking everybody, everybody in council, do you all agree we should keep it within South Lyon? That's, that's all I'm asking, and not overcomplicating things here. Well, if we keep it within South Lyon, that takes the library out. Let's because... say two miles. <laughs> <laughs> two miles, five miles within South Lyon. It doesn't... And, and that, that's the goal. I'm not planning on going to Boyne Mountain or treetops, you know, right. okay. or that, anything like that. This, we're talking about whether we want to do this, not where we want to do it. I do well, have a quick question. Though. All right. Is there a motion then on the count, on the facilitators and then the set of date? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, for time. I do have one more quick question. I'll keep it quick. Have you looked into the cities that have done something similar, and what is the success rate if you have or the reviews? Um, I have looked at several of the cities. They are very happy with the uh, end results, and they have implemented them. Uh, the majority of the cities that do strategic planning sessions either do them annually or every three to five years, depending upon what their strategic plan is put in place. Okay. Um, the last community I worked in, we did an annual outside facilitated 
strategic planning session. Okay, well, I mean, that is a little bit broad for me. Do you mind sending me some information from different cities that you've researched and looked into and have backgrounds on? Because I would like to see that stuff. Sure. And see how successful this is. Thank you. I'll make the motion that we approve moving forward with the strategic planning retreat session with Lou Bender, the amount of $2,300. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion by Kramer and uh, second by Kurswell. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, okay. Opposed, no. One no. That motion passes. Are we going to try to set a date? Um, we'd like to, uh, the proposed date that uh, Mr. Bender does currently have reserved for us <laughs> is March 19th. That was the day that he had available in March. It is a Saturday. Do you think that's still available? I do believe that's still available. Last time I talked to him, he was holding it for us to make a decision. I can do March 19th. Works for me. Works for me. I'll make it work. Okay. All right. Let's just schedule March 19th as the retreat. Anything further on this topic? Well, just let's make sure the next meeting we have a discussion about locations. Location, and, yes. Uh, all right. All right, I'm going to call a 10-minute recess. Uh, those of you who need to get uh, agendas signed, <laughs> now you're well, welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. It gets better and better. <laughs> but thank you all for coming. Okay.